Welcome to Sabbath Sunday. Part of our culture at Mercy Culture is that we honor the Sabbath. And one time a year, we do what we call Sabbath Sunday, where as a community, we don't come to church, but we encounter God and we worship from our homes or wherever we're at all around the country. And so today, this is a fun, it's a different and exciting day where we get to rest and be with family and friends and encounter Him all over the country together. So make sure you do it just like you do at Mercy Culture. So if you're dancing, dance. If you're on the floor, get on the floor. Do not hold back encountering God and let's finish this year out strong. And it's been an amazing year of expanding yeah. territory. That was the word of the Lord over this year. And I'm so proud of this church where we have faithfully stewarded this prophetic word of expanding territory. There were so many incredible moments from this year. Yeah. What was one of your highlights of 2022? One of my highlights for sure is our very first Marked Women's Conference. Uh, the first day on June 24th was the day Day that Roe v. Wade was overturned. Man, so many of us have been praying for decades at Justice Nights. We've been praying and fasting for years together. And so I'll never forget that morning, right before we're going into our first service and opening up conference, all of our cell phones just blowing up, people running into my office and we're like celebrating and crying. And then we just rolled, we said, let's take this celebration from back in the offices straight onto that platform. And there was this this roar and just abruption of praise and celebration of thousands of women at our very first uh, women's conference on the on Roe v. Wade being overturned. I'll never forget that moment of day. Absolutely beautiful. I think my favorite moment is um, a bunch of moments put together. Every time I see children spiritually leading in our church, I love it. Whether if it's on the sports field or uh, leading worship on Sunday, either singing or with dancing or whatever it is, uh, I love seeing the social media posts of your kids encountering God with you in the mornings. Uh, that, that's yeah. my favorite thing where we know mm -hmm that we're raising up a generation right. that knows the ways of God. Well, this year's not over. We're not done expanding territory. So gather everyone up around your screen and uh, let's worship God this morning with all of our hearts. you Holy Spirit we invite you Holy Spirit we invite you Holy come fill up our rooms come fill up this room come fill up this room cause this is all for you Jesus this is all for you, Lord. <laughs> what a merciful, wonderful God. This is all for you, Lord. A wonderful, merciful God. <laughs> this is all for you, a wonderful, merciful God. All for you, a wonderful, merciful God. This is all for you, a wonderful, merciful God. This is all for you, Lord, a wonderful, merciful God. This is all for you, a wonderful, merciful God. This is all, this is all, this is all. Come and have your way. Come and have your way. 
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. Merciful God, praise God for 
so be it, so be it. Let it be, let it be, Lord. So be it, so be it. Let it be, Lord. Yeah. Oh, oh. Amen. 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 So be it, so be it, yeah. And all your promises are yes and amen. So be it, so be it. So be it, so be it, yeah.
were so good My God, you were faithful My God, you were so good My God, you were faithful My God, you were so good My God, you were faithful My God, you were so good My God, you were faithful My God, you were so good My God, you were faithful My God, you were so good My God, you were faithful My God, you were so good My God, you were faithful My God, you were so good My God, you were faithful My God, you were so good My God, you were faithful
Blessing and honor is yours, oh yours. Oh, wisdom and power is yours, oh yours. Oh, blessing and honor is yours, oh yours. For there is no one like you, God. Oh, blessing and honor is yours. Wisdom and power is yours, oh yours. Oh, blessing and honor is yours, oh yours. But there is no one like you, God. Oh, blessing and honor. Oh, bless 
blessing and honor is yours Oh, yours Wisdom and power is yours Oh, yours Oh, blessing and honor is yours Oh, yours There is no one like you, God the Lord on high. Holy is your presence. Holy at a night. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord on high. Holy is your presence. Holy at a night. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Your presence, holy at the night. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord on high. Holy is your presence, holy at the night. You're so holy, holy. You're so holy, holy. You're so holy. You're so holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord on high. Holy is your presence. Holy at a
just want to pour my oil on your feet Holy at night I just want to pour my oil on your feet Holy at night I just want to pour my
Welcome to Mercy Culture. I'm Bosa and I serve on the creative team. Our vision is to take people from corporate encounters with God to daily personal encounters with God. If this is your first time with us, we can't wait to meet you. Text the word NEW to 59090 so we can get to know you. For everyone who texts NEW, $10 will be donated to The Justice Reform, an organization that is answering the cry for justice by bringing reformation from city to city. MC Connect is your first step to joining and serving at Mercy Culture, but it's about more than membership. It's about daily personal encounters with God, discipleship, and community. Through MC Connect, you will learn more about our culture, how you best connect with God daily, and enter into the covering of Mercy Culture Church. For more information, text CONNECT to 59090. Here at Mercy Culture, we honor God by giving our first and our best through tithes and offerings. There are several ways you can give. Text GIVE followed by a dollar amount to 817-835-9090 online at mercyculture.com give. And for physical offerings, you can use the boxes on your way out or send it by mail. Every January, we start the year off with a season of fasting and prayer together as a church. And in 2023, we are inviting everyone to join us for a 40-day corporate fast. During the first week of the fast, join us in person or online as we gather for solemn assembly every night from 7 to 8 p.m. to worship and pray together. For more information and to stay connected, follow us on social media. Visit mercyculture.com or text NEWS to 59090. <laughs> This is so big, and you don't really even know how to do it. But the Lord says, I am gonna show you the way of how to do this, says the Lord. And so you're not gonna be one of those churches that blows up and blows out. The Lord says you're going to be a church that lasts in the generations. This is a generational church that's going to have legacy for your children and your children's children, says the Lord. You are preparing the way of the Lord for the greatest generation the earth has ever seen. My name is Landon. I'm the senior lead pastor of Mercy Culture Church. The vision of our church is to take people from corporate encounters with God to daily personal encounters with God. And here's what that means is, is that we don't want you just to encounter God in a church service, but we want you to encounter God every single day. 
Because when you get in the presence of God, it's so easy to hear him. When you begin to hear God and obey God, everything in your life begins to change. And that is when you begin to spiritually grow. And at Mercy Culture Church, we're passionate about God encounters because we're passionate about people spiritually growing. We wanna help you grow in God. And we do this through our membership, which is really discipleship. We call it Connect. It's really easy. You can text the number that goes on the screen or go to our website and click Connect and you watch a few short videos about our church and then you take this amazing connect with God assessment. And here's what it does. It will show you how you best connect with God. We've done a disservice in the body of Christ where we've tried to make everyone connect with God the same. And the truth is, just like everybody has different interests and personalities, everyone connects with God differently. So when you learn how you best connect with God, it is a game changer to your spiritual growth. It becomes easy to connect with God. It becomes fun to connect with God. And that's when you'll watch your life change forever is when you begin to spiritually grow. And so if you've been coming to Mercy Culture for a few months, or maybe you've even been all year long, stop being a long-term visitor. Go to the next step. Go through MC Connect. Make this your church home. I promise you, you will not regret it. We're very excited about some things coming up. Uh, we have a corporate fast that's coming up starting at the beginning of the year. This year we're calling a 40 day fast. And I'm gonna share more about this fast and, and why God called us to a 40 day fast. But I'm asking every single person that's a member of Mercy Culture Church to choose a 40 day fast. Notice I did not say a 40 day diet. This is not intermediate fasting. This is not a, a diet workout plan that you're like, sweet, I'm just gonna join my churches doing spiritually to my diet. That's not what this is. I'm asking everybody to discipline your flesh. I'm asking everybody to spiritually engage and I'm asking everybody to fast. So some people are gonna join me in a, uh, a liquid fast. Other people are doing Daniel fasts. Uh, some people are pregnant or, or have some uh, reason why they can't fast food. Then fast something that you love that's impactful. Maybe you fast media or your favorite dessert or something, but here's what I'm asking you. I'm asking you to challenge yourself. I'm asking you to push yourself and uh, let's grow together and let's come in with intentionality in 2023. And then finally, uh, the first Sunday of January is gonna be our family worship service. These are some of the funnest services of the year where we bring all of the kids in and we worship together. Come encounter God with us on January 1st. Well, let's get into the message. This is the last sermon of the year. It's the last sermon of this easy series. And so if you have your Bibles, you could turn with me to Luke chapter 10, or you could text notes to the number that comes on the screen and what's in front of me will be sent to you. Luke 10, 38 says this. Now, as they were on their way, Jesus entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted by much serving. Someone say much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. I came to tell you this morning that the Sabbath rest is easy in the presence of God. The title of this message is, The Sabbath is Easy. Let's pray. So Lord, we thank you for your presence. I thank you right now, Holy Spirit, we just invite you to come. Come into every home, every car, every place where someone's watching right now. And we declare this place is yours. Come on, pray with me right now. Just open your, uh, open your mouth, just say it out loud. Holy Spirit, you're welcome right here, right now. This place is yours. Come on, pray, no spirit, but the Holy Spirit is welcome. We say spirit of fear, anxiety, strife, any troubling spirit, you must go. Holy Spirit, come rule and reign, have your way. Lord, I pray that you would breathe right now into your word. I pray your Logos word would become alive. Let it become rhema right now. I pray you would give us ears to hear, hearts to receive, minds to understand what your spirit is saying. Lord, we declare, no one came to hear me. We all came to hear you. So we say, speak, Lord, your servant's listening. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Well, we're in this series on It's Easy, that God makes hard things easy in the presence of God. Our primary text for this is in Matthew chapter 11, where Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. This is where we got the song easy. 
He said, come to me, I'll teach you. I'm gonna teach you how to rest. I'm gonna teach you my ways. This was God's heart originally, where he wants to teach us how to rest in him. He wants to teach us how to abide in him. He wants to teach us the Sabbath rest. See, so many different things have been hard in our life because we've chosen to believe it's hard. We've chosen to partner with the hard path. A lot of people have had challenges with this word on easy. It's, it's confronted or offended their flesh because we've partnered with what is hard. And I want you to hear this today, it's so important. Listen right now, just in your homes, wherever you're watching, it is easy to encounter God. It's easy to rest in God. It's easy to Sabbath. And God did the hard things. Jesus did the hard things so that we could rest in him and we can, through him, have hard things become easy. <laughs> so when I was asking the Lord, what are the things that he wanted me to teach on in this series on easy? What are the things that have been really, really hard in my life and many believers? And if I'm honest with you, learning how to Sabbath was the hardest spiritual discipline of my life. Now that's wild because I've been on eight 40 day fasts. I've been having the discipline of fasting since I was in high school. And despite the discipline of fasting or all the other prayer retreats or trips or the things that, that I've done uh, in, in, in my journey, in my adventure with the Lord, the hardest thing I ever had to learn how to do was to Sabbath. Now this is wild, just think about this concept for a second. The hardest thing I've ever had to learn how to do spiritually is rest in God. That doesn't even make sense. Kind of like it doesn't even make sense to partner with the lie or the spiritual disposition that everything has to be hard. I'll even be so honest to tell you, I kind of even felt like in my heart that I was doing something wrong when I was resting, when I was Sabbathing. Or if I would take multiple days off, I would start feeling like this anxiety or this kind of panic that would come into me, like, like I, I'm doing something wrong. I mean, I grew up reading the Proverbs, a little rest, a little slumber, a little folding the hands and poverty rises up like a bandit. Like, and I had this whole thing in me that if I wasn't doing something for God, I wasn't connecting with God. It was one of the greatest lies I ever partnered with. And some of the greatest times I've ever connected with God in my entire life is when I'm doing nothing but just resting in Him. So what is the Sabbath? You find the Sabbath origin in Genesis chapter two, two books into the Bible. It says this, if you have your notes, it says, on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from his work. That word rested means to take a breath or literally God breathed in. We do this all the time at Mercy Culture Church where we'll be in moments of worship and I'll say, breathe in the presence of God. What are we doing? We are in the moment with God. God himself modeled rest, not because he was tired, because he was showing us a better way. The word Sabbath is simple. It literally means no work. When we're Sabbathing, it means that we are not working. A group of uh, church just went to Israel and they're there on the Sabbath. And on the Sabbath, people don't drive cars. They don't, they don't push elevator buttons. They, 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 they shut down their businesses. I mean, the entire city begins to shut down on this Sabbath because they honor the principle of the Sabbath. Personally, I think it's more work to walk than to drive. And so I think we can argue that theology later. But I love the heart posture of stopping everything and just being with the Lord. We got this from Exodus chapter 20. Verse nine, it says this, this is God speaking to Moses, giving him the 10 commandments. He says, six days you shall labor and do all your work. But then he said, on the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God, and you should not do any work. Now this is really important because <clears throat> there's some people like me that you're hard workers. And some of you are proud of the hard work you do, and you should be proud of your hard work. I know that when I work hard and set goals and give my all, I'm proud of that. That's a good thing. So the Sabbath isn't about being lazy. It's not about pushing things off. It's saying to do it in the parameters that God has set. Kind of reminds you of marriage and, and being intimate and, and romantic relationships. Those are all beautiful things in the context that God set it. But when you try to bring relationships and intimacy that should be in a marriage, outside of a marriage, then it becomes sin. And here's the thing is when you try to take your works 
outside of the context that God designed it, it will lead you to sin. I'm gonna show you more. So instead of working on the Sabbath, the purpose of the Sabbath is to worship. So I'm trading my work for my worship. So let me give you the most simple definition you can. This is something I encourage you to write down and remember. The Sabbath literally means, it just simply means encountering God. That is the purpose of Sabbathing, is to encounter God. So if you just replace the word Sabbath with encountering God, I want you to think about all the arguments against it. Well, encountering God is Old Testament, or I, I don't have to encounter God anymore, there's only one life to live. No, 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 no. Encountering God is one of the greatest things that you can ever do. So why wouldn't you want to encounter God? I know everyone who's a member of Mercy Culture, that's why you're here, that's why you're part of this church, is because you love encountering God. Let me just pastor you for a moment. Let me spiritually father you. You can take your God encounters to an entirely another level by just honoring the Sabbath. Let me just say it like this. Exodus 28 says this, says, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. So right before God gives us the 10 commandments of honoring the Sabbath, he says, remember the Sabbath day. Why does he have to tell us to remember it? It's because so many forget. So many lost the honor. And here's what he said. He said, keep it holy. You know what it means to be holy? It means to be set apart. Your Sabbath needs to be set apart. Now we encounter God every day, but there's one day that needs to be set apart. There's one day that is dedicated as his day. It's the Lord's day. It's worship day. It's resting in God day. It's the encounter God day. This is the 10 commandment. So here's my question for you today. What other commandment do you willingly break? What other commandment do you justify breaking? I know a lot of people say, well, that's Old Testament, but no, this is a commandment of the Lord. In fact, in the New Testament, Jesus said all of the commandments are summed up in loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and spirit. Where Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law, I came to fulfill the law. I'm gonna talk more about that in a second. But what other commandment, don't have any other gods before me, don't make any idol, don't misuse the Lord's name in vain, do not murder, don't commit adultery, uh, don't lie, don't steal, don't covet. W what other one of these are you like, oh, no, no, that's good, you don't have to, that's Old Testament. Oh, murder, it's Old Testament. Coveting, it's Old Testament. Lying, go for it, it's Old Testament. No, no, we never do that. But this one thing, does that make sense to you? Of course it doesn't make sense, because it's spiritual. So how come this one thing is the one thing that religious people or carnal people will say, this is the one thing, you don't have to worry about it. That's Old Testament, you don't have to do it. And I wanna just let you know as your pastor, it's not true. The Sabbath is the one he said, hey, remember this one. Don't forget this one, keep it holy. And not only is it in the 10 commandments, but it's clear in the New Testament. So when people say it's Old Testament, what they're saying is this is law. It actually was the phys part of the physical law, the Ten Commandments. Well, it's, it's law and we're not under the law. What does that mean? It means this, that we don't have to honor the Sabbath to be in right standing with God. All of these laws are how people were in right standing with God. Jesus came and offered his life as a living sacrifice to put us in right standing with God. So I'm not talking about your right standing with God. I'm not talking about are you saved. We're talking about the depth of the intimacy that you have with God. We're talking about your relationship. We're talking about your spiritual maturity. We're talking about your spiritual sensitivity. And a lot of people are trying to go to the next level spiritually and you can't figure out why you're stuck. I wanna submit to you, maybe you stopped growing because you stopped honoring the Sabbath or you forgot. See, the Jewish people understood that the law doesn't mean rules. The law meant life. And even in the New Testament, if you're stuck on it being in the Old Testament, which you shouldn't be, Hebrews 4, 9 says, therefore there remains a Sabbath rest. And the New Testament right there says, no, 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 the Sabbath remains. This is so important. Why is it important? Well, Jesus told us in Mark chapter two, verse 27, he says this, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. What does that mean? God had this gift called Sabbath rest, and he had this gift for you so that you can encounter him. Not rules, not works. He has this gift of beautiful, intimate relationship 
This is a gift that God has for you. And this is a gift that we need to steward. How wild is it most of us are watching this on Christmas Day? What a gift God's given us today, this gift of Sabbath rest. Hmm. Let me give you some practical advice real quick. So how do you have a good Sabbath? Well, the first practical advice I wanna give you is set aside your Sabbath day. So most people, your Sabbath day should be Sunday. That's the day that you worship. That's the day that you are in community. That's the day that you fellowship and have friends, but that should be the day that you're not working. So that means this, if you're a realtor, after you go to church, you're not running out and selling houses. You're Sabbath resting. Well, what if you lose the deal? You're Sabbath resting. Well, what if the client goes with someone else? You're Sabbath resting. And I'm gonna get to these things in a moment. But this is the day that you honor God with your time, your treasure, and your talents. Some other practical advice. Turn off your phone. Get off social media. Don't check your email. Turn off your work email. Cut off the access points that things that will cause you to work. Some people will do something like, well, I'm gonna rest all day and then at eight o'clock at night, I'm done resting. It's funny because the Jewish people don't even start their Sabbath till the sun goes down and then all the way into the next day. What am I saying? Don't cheat. Don't cut corners. Give them the whole day to honor God. Let me give you some more things about the Sabbath. The Sabbath is about honor. It's holy unto the Lord. Exodus 28, it says, keep it holy. When you honor the Sabbath, you honor God. When you set aside the Sabbath day to worship God, what you're saying is, Lord, you're holy. I'm setting you apart. That word holy means otherness. It means there's nothing like it. Only God, he sets himself apart. You're acknowledging who God is. The Sabbath is also about trust. Do you know it takes trust to rest? It takes trust, not running after that business deal, not running after that client, not putting in those extra hours on that day. It means this, Lord, I trust you to provide for me. I hear this a lot as a pastor and it's actually theologically incorrect where people who dishonor God with their finances say things like, well, I just tithe my time. And that's not an accurate biblical statement. We Sabbath our time and we tithe our finances. So your Sabbath rest is the physical version of your tithe. The same way if you rob God with your tithes and offerings, you can rob from yourself by robbing or declining to give God the honor that he's due through the Sabbath rest. Number three, it's about hearing God. This might be my favorite. Hebrews 4, 7 says this, God again set a certain day calling it today. This he did when a long time later he spoke through David as in the passage already quoted, today if you hear this voice, do not harden your heart. And then it goes on in the next verse to talk about, therefore it remains the Sabbath day of rest. Scripture is saying this, if you hear the voice of God, you'll hear God in the Sabbath rest. One of my favorite things about the Sabbath is that's the day I hear God. That's the day you go to church and you hear God through the word. You hear God through your pastor. You hear God through someone else who God spoke to and is giving words to you. You hear God audibly talk to you. You hear the small voice of the Holy Spirit confirm something in you. The Sabbath is about a day to hear God. Let me give you some practical advice on this. The Sabbath day is the best day to ask God questions. And when you ask him questions, don't demand an answer immediately. I have a list of questions that I ask God. I write them down. And when I'm in my daily encounters, I'll say, hey Lord, what about this? What should I do about this? What do you think about this? I'm stuck with this in this relationship. I literally ask God. One time I was uh, talking with Heather and I was just sharing with her some frustrations I was going through and we talked through it. And, the next morning I was in my daily encounter and I heard the Holy Spirit say, why don't you talk to me about those things? So I just started talking to him the same way I did my wife. Instantly, he started speaking to me. Don't put a pressure on yourself that you have to hear instantly from God, but the Sabbath is a great day to ask God questions. Sabbath is also about obedience. Let me read Hebrews 4, 6 in the Amplified. It says, therefore, since these promises remain for some to enter the rest of those formerly 
had the good news preached to them and failed to grasp it or did not enter because their unbelief of the evidence of their disobedience. Your Sabbath allows you or teaches you, trains you how to be obedient. It automatically aligns you into obedience where you're choosing to honor God despite other needs that you may have in your life or other pressures. The fifth thing, and this is also one of my favorite, is the Sabbath is about healing. I love the story in Luke chapter six where there was a man with the wither hand. And in Luke chapter six, verse six through 11, the Pharisees are trying to catch Jesus in a trap. And I, I, I talked about Jesus healing another man that was paralyzed when we talked about healing is easy in the presence. And here's another example of the Pharisees or the religious community waiting to trap Jesus to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. Just think about how evil this is for a moment. They don't want someone healed and they want to catch Jesus in sin because he's operating in healing and a freedom that they don't have. So Jesus allows this moment to come and right on the Sabbath, he says to the man, stretch your hand forward. And instantly the man with the wither hand was healed. <laughs> so it goes on to say in verse 11, but they were filled with fury and discussed what, with one another what they might do to Jesus. They were constantly accusing Jesus of work on the Sabbath. But we know that, he, that healing is not work for God. He heals on the Sabbath. That's why we sing it in the song easy. It's not hard for him. It's not work for him. I believe there's a lot of people believing for healing and your healing is in your rest. In fact, the Psalm says, he will make you lie down in green pastures. I believe that there's a group of people that the Lord is making you lie down because you're not honoring God with rest. I believe there's some people, your healing is in the Sabbath rest. It's in that time in the presence of God that you don't have to strive for it, that it's just there waiting for you in a God encounter. It's so important that we understand the healing power of spending time with God. There's healing in the Sabbath. So last question, why is Sabbathing so hard? Why could we do all of these great things and conquer mountains and run for political offices and start ministries and start businesses and do all of these huge things for God? And then when he says, hey, I just want you to rest and not work in me one day a week, that becomes this monumental task. I'm telling you, it was one of the hardest things ever for me is learning how to rest in God. And I'm gonna tell you why the Sabbath rest is hard when you think you have to work for your relationship with God. I got goosebumps right now, just in the studio, just teaching this. For years, I thought I had to earn my relationship with God. If I worked hard enough for it, if I worked hard enough for my pastor, if I, if I showed my spiritual parents how hard I'd worked and, 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 and I'd do everything I can to please them and I worked and I worked and I tried and I strived and, and, and I just wanted God to love me. I just wanted him to be proud of me. I just wanted him to, to speak to me. I just wanted him to encounter me and maybe if I worked hard enough, I could encounter God. And just like the children of Israel, they were missing their God encounters because of their work. And some of the most beautiful encounters were in the rest. Look at this scripture. Ephesians 2, 8 says, for it is by grace that you've been saved, through faith. It's not of yourself. It is a gift from God. Look at verse nine, not by works so that you can boast. So church, the Sabbath is hard when you think you have to work for your God encounters. The Sabbath is hard when you think you have to earn it. The Sabbath is hard when you think you have to perform. But the Sabbath is so easy when you just encounter God. It's amazing. Some of the most impactful moments that I've encountered God haven't been these profound tasks, haven't been these prophetic words, haven't been the great direction that we're leading the church in. Some of the most profound, impactful moments I've ever had with God is when I'm with him, he says, I love you. I'm just bawling. 
One time he said to me, I'm proud of you. I started weeping. I said, why? Wow. I haven't done enough for you to be proud of me. I haven't accomplished enough. What have I done in my life to make you proud of me? He says, because you're my son. Don't get me wrong. I've given my life to the Lord. I work as hard as I can for him. I love to please the Lord. I love to do great exploits for him. But it's not what I build. It's not what I do that makes him love me. It's because I'm his son. Do you know God loves you? Because you're his daughter. Because you're his son. You're his child. Not by what you do. Do great things for God. Let's do them together. But let's encounter him. Not in working hard, but in resting well. Let's go back to our final scripture. Luke chapter 10. It's the story of Mary and Martha. It's the story of works and faith works and rest. Verse 40 says, Martha was distracted. You know the word distracted means? She was pulled away. Just think about this for a second. Jesus is in her house and she's distracted by work. What are you distracted by? When Jesus wants to come into your house, Spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Maybe even right now as you're watching, you're distracted by something. You're worried about the next thing and what you have to do and cooking and entertaining and leading and managing. What if this was the moment right now on this Sabbath Sunday that God just wanted to encounter you and we didn't have to work for it? Verse 41 says she was anxious. Look at this. She had anxiety. You know that word anxiety or anxious means? It means divided part or pulled into pieces, or she wasn't whole. Please hear me today, because someone's gonna get free. A lot of you are struggling with anxiety and depression because you're not resting in God. You're not honoring the Sabbath. So part of you feels missing. You don't feel whole because you're not spending the time at his feet like Mary. How broken was Mary? Scripture said she had seven demons. She was so messed up. But she wasn't trying to earn Jesus' affection. She just sat at his feet. If it was wiping his feet with her hair or sitting listening, when Jesus was around on the foot of a cross, she just wanted to be with him. And I want to let you know that Jesus wanted to be with her. And some of you need to hear this today. He wants to be with you. Verse 42, it says, one thing is best. He said, Mary chose what was best. And that was to encounter God. I want to encourage you this next year. Encounter God. Choose what's best. Encounter him every day. But honor the Sabbath. I'm asking you as your pastor. I'm asking every leader, every businessman, every parent, every member of this church. Honor God. Don't work. Rest. Worship. God encounter. Let's just bow our heads and close our eyes all over this place wherever you are. Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you would deliver us of our works. Lord, we'll do anything you ask us to do. But I thank you. Your love for us is not in what we do. It's in who we are. Jesus, I ask you right now, would you come? Would you make resting easy? I thank you, the Sabbath makes encountering you easy. Lord, I pray this word easy will never leave us. I pray it'll be something that we steward the rest of our lives. Holy Spirit, would you teach us how to live in your ease? Last time for this year, let's pray together. Wherever you are, pray it out loud with me. We declare this is a year of expanding territory. Father, I thank you that this is a building block that we will continue as people and as a community to expand territory. So I pray 1 Chronicles 4.10. Come on, pray it over your friends, pray to your family, even the person in the room that doesn't want you to pray it over. Pray over that person. We declare, oh, that you would bless us indeed. Expand our territory. Put your hand of favor upon us. 
and keep us from evil all the way in to 2023. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us on this special Sunday. Mercy Culture Church, you are a generous and obedient church that faithfully gives every single Sunday. We want you to know that you can give this Sunday as normal. The ways to give is at the bottom of your screen. If you just wanna prepare your hearts to receive, I wanna bless and pray out with a benediction, Exodus 33, 13. Lord, teach us your ways that we may know you and find favor. We love you so much, Mercy Culture Church, and we'll see you next week.